Hi friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams yet again. Today we are diving deep into the topic of series. I have a lot of series that I am in the middle of and that I haven't finished, but I also want to talk about the series I made progress in in 2020, the series I want to start in 2021. You may notice a kind of blank spot on my shelf here. This is where I'm going to keep all the series that I have the next book and want to keep reading them because then I will see them in front of me, I will notice them, and hopefully make progress on them. So every year for the last couple years, working on series has been a goal. In 2020, I did not specifically say a number. I just did a video just like this where I talked about the series that I'm in the middle of and just kind of shared with you where I'm at with the series. I unofficially, I guess after that video, I heard other people talking about 20 series in 2020. I'm like, hey, that's catchy. <laughs> I want to do that too. So I didn't make a video about it. I didn't include it officially in my goals at the beginning of the year. But in my mind, I wanted to make 20 books of progress in series. And I think over the summer I did a, like, how am I doing on my goals video? I feel like I did because I made awesome progress on my series this year. I think I read 37 books that were not series starters. I did start a few series, so I'm not even counting the first book in those series. I read 36 or 37 books that were continuations of series in 2021. Nope, in 2020. So let's just talk about some of the series I made progress in. I'm going to show you. This is my series page, and I'm not a big book journaler person, but I did create this page to show all the series, show myself all the series that I'm in the middle of, and like all the books that are in that series. I don't like this page anymore. It doesn't make me happy when I look at it. I think I'm going to start a new one. I don't know if it will still look like this, just a little cleaned up. I just want to start fresh, but I will say there are three... There are three series that were included at the beginning of 2020 that I have decided to DNF. I'm not going to continue with those series. That's the Thursday Next series by Jasper Ford. The first book being The Air Affair. I did read The Air Affair. I did not love it. I definitely could not get into the print version. Once I switched to audio, I enjoyed the audio. But it's not a series that at this point in time I'm interested in continuing. So I'm going to DNF that one. I also decided to DNF the um, Jojo Moy series that begins with Me Before You, and then there's After You, and then Still Me. I just read Me Before You way before Booktube Days, enjoyed it, cried my eyes out, but I don't have any desire to read farther in the series. And I've also decided to stop reading An Ember in the Ashes. I may end up coming back to that, but I did pick up, I had read An Ember in the Ashes and Torch Against the Night a long time ago, like my first year on Booktube, I believe. Then I had to wait forever for the third one, which was Reaper at the Gates. And eventually, at some point this year, I did bring home Reaper at the Gates from the library. I listened to the first two on audio, wanted to do the same thing with the third one. But at that point, it had been years since I read the first two. And I feel like I would have to go back and restart. And I just didn't want to do that this year. So I decided to DNF that one. That may come back around at some point, but not this year it's not going back on my radar. Another series I haven't I haven't officially DNF'd it as like I didn't cross it off, but I and I do own the second book in the series which is uh City of Stars. Extravaganza is the name of the series, I believe, by Mary Hoffman and these are YA upper middle grade series. I really enjoyed City of Stars, but when I look at all of these series that I'm surrounded by right now, all the books around me, this is this is a series that I just don't feel motivated to pick up right now. So this is going off of my series shelf. I'm going to cross it off my list. So whenever I redo a new list, it's not going to get added. So that's four series that I'm DNFing for now. I'm not saying that I'll never go back to them, but for now, I'm not focusing on them. Okay, let's let's talk now about the series that I made progress in in 2020 and kind of where I'm at with those. So because I have so many books I'm going to be talking about today, I'm not going to really go in depth about what these books are about or what this series is about. I may kind of give brief overview descriptions of them, but I'm not going to focus on that because that would just make this video super long. Since I'm talking about books I have read, books I have next in the series, what I have that's going back on the shelf, and seven series that I want to start. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, so let's just jump right in. I, I'm so proud of the progress that I made in 2020 
in some series. So the series that I made, well, I guess the series that I made the most progress in started out as a reread. I picked up, and this is on a different page even, I picked up over the summer, I listened to, I shouldn't say I picked them up because I didn't. I own some of the newer ones, like Orphan's Wish by Melanie Dickerson. It, the first one is The Healer's Apprentice, and I believe these are called the Fairy Tale Romance series. So they're not, I call them the Hagen, Hagenheim. They don't all take place in Hagenheim, but the first ones do, which is like a made up town. But all of them are sort of fairy tale retellings. We had Aladdin, we had Little Mermaid, we had Tang, um, I said Tangled, Sleeping Beauty, Rapunzel, all of these stories, fairy tales, have an, an a matching story in this series that takes place all in the same world. So the the first ones kind of are all at the same time period and then we kind of move down generations. If I could read one more, I'll finish it. But this year, not counting the first one, I made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books progress in that series. So yay, that's fantastic. Another series that I made really good progress in this year is the uh, mystery series by Louise Penny that starts with Still Life and I read Still Life and A Fatal Grace in 2019. So this year I read book three, which was The Cruelest Month, book four, A Rule Against Murder, book five, The Brutal Telling, book six, Bury Your Dead, and book seven, A Trick of the Light. Trick of the Light was definitely my favorite. I really like this series a lot. Most of them happen in this made up Quebec town in Canada. Uh, we really get to know all the different characters and people in this town. Armand Gamache is the detective that, and his he and his team are the crime solvers, um, but people in the town often get involved. And there are other stories outside of that town that kind of carry through the series as well. So it is a series that you do need to read in order. And I cannot wait to continue with that one. I believe there are 17 in the series. So I have quite a ways to go, but I'm glad that I read five of them. A series that I completed in 2020 is The Books of Bayern, and it starts with Goose Girl, which is the only one I don't actually own. And then I, so I reread Goose Girl. That's the only one I had already read. And then this year I read Anna Burning, River Secrets, and Forest Born. Uh, and these all deal with four different young girls in this land, Bayern, and they each have kind of an ability to communicate and slightly control like the wind and fire, the trees, um, water, and Goose Girl is, she has kind of an ability to talk to animals. That was a pretty fun, upper again, upper, upper middle grade, low YA series that I really enjoyed and I finished it. So yay. Another series that I completed that I don't own anymore because I unhauled the whole series is the Unblemished Trilogy by Sarah Ella. Uh, this year I read Unbreakable which completed that trilogy and I made the mistake of waiting too long to read that one. I should have read it as soon as it came in and the other two were more fresh in my mind because by the time I was reading it this year I just really didn't care anymore. So that was pretty sad. Uh, it was not my favorite Another series that I finished this year, I read Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson, which is the third in the Mistborn trilogy. So good. I really love this. These are not super long fantasies, but I I think it took me three years. I read one each year. Sad. Um, I would love to read more Brandon Sanderson. I don't own any other Brandon Sanderson. How many times can I say his name all at once? But yeah, I'm really glad that I finished that series. There's two, two series that I'll talk about that I'm caught up in and I don't have the most recent book, but I read The Vanderbeekers of 141st Street in 2019 and Vanderbeekers in the Hidden Garden, which I also own in 2019. And then in 2020, I read Vanderbeekers to the Rescue and Vanderbeekers Lost and Found. I absolutely love this series. And if you're looking for a middle grade series with a strong family at the at the forefront in the center and that's so heartfelt and also quite humorous Vanderbeekers so good and I'm also caught up I've talked about this pretty recently in the Nevermore or the the yeah the Nevermore series I've read Nevermore and Wondersmith in 2019 and then this year I just finished Hollowpox not that long ago so good another middle grade series that I only have one left and I'll talk about it when I get to the books that I'm putting back on my shelf, but I love the Penderwicks. And this year I read three Penderwicks books. I read Penderwicks on Gardam Street, Penderwicks at Point Muet, and Penderwicks in Spring. 
and I love each of them. We kind of, the girls get older in each book. This is another family oriented book. It's a, we follow a, a group of sisters and, and eventually a little brother. It's such a lovely series. This is a series that kind of feels like a classic. Like it has a very uh, high emphasis on, on family and values and loving each other through everything. I don't know. It just, it feels like a book that was written a really long time ago and it wasn't. So I just, I love that series so much. Oh, another series that I finished this year is The Lord of the Rings. Finally. Yay. I can't believe I had never read them before, but I read all three. Well, I read The Hobbit, which is not technically part of the series. It's just set in the same world. Then I read Fellowship of the Ring, uh, Return Two Towers, and Return of the King. Unfortunately, I didn't love it. I loved Fellowship of the Ring and I loved The Hobbit. I've read The Hobbit many, many times, so I knew I would love that one. Um, but it, as the books went on, as we got deeper into the story, I just didn't care as much. <laughs> and by the end, I was ready to be done. Sad day. But I finished it. Yay. Another series that I don't have in front of me because I borrowed all of these from the library, but I am caught up. I don't know if there's going to be more, but it's the Fairly True Fairy Tales retelling series by Liesl Shirtliff. I've talked about these so many times, but they are Rump and Grump and Red and Jack are the four that I read in this series. And I loved them. Loved them so much. So good. I started and made progress in the Emily of New Moon series. It begins with Emily of New Moon by Ellen Montgomery. And I also read the second one, Emily Climbs. And I have the third one on my stack that we'll talk about in a minute for next year. I will finish this very soon. So love those. Uh, not as much as Anne. <laughs> I definitely like Anne better, but I, I'm glad that I am reading more Ellen Montgomery because she's lovely. I have a few more here that I made progress in this year. The Land of Stories series is another middle grade brother and sister who are able to travel into this book of fairy tales. And in this fairy tale land, oh, there's a map. I love this map. In this fairy tale land, all of the fairy tale characters kind of live in the same land. So there's different parts of the land. So like Sleeping Beauty's Kingdom is over here. Um, in the middle is Red Riding Hood's territory. And they're all kind of queens and princesses within the same world. So it's kind of fun. It's a fun take on things. I will continue with that series this year. I read the second book in the Outlander series this year, Dragon, Dragonfly and Amber. I actually listened to this on audio, which is a good, good uh, way to attack a huge book. This is so big and it's slightly overwhelming. Like the, the words are really little. <laughs> it's just a lot. So it's actually not as big as you think. It's like 750 pages or so but it's a lot of words and listening to it on audio was a long time, but the way to go. I read the second in the Winter Night trilogy, Girl in the Tower. The first one is Winter of the Witch. This is by Catherine Arden. I read this last winter. I would like to read the third one soon. That might have to go on my January TBR and knock out that series right away. I'd, I have to borrow it from the library because I don't own the third one, but I did make progress. A another mystery series that I started in 2019 was the Maisie Dobbs series. I really enjoyed reading Maisie Dobbs and so I'm thrilled to continue on with this series. It's kind of a historical mystery series and book two is Birds of a Feather and I also really enjoyed that one. Let me just make sure I covered all the books that I've read in series before we move on. Oh, another series that I started this year is American Royals. The sequel, Majesty, is actually on hold at the library, ready for me to pick up. I got an email about that one, so I need to go get that one. Another series I started, we'll talk about in a second, is Next Year in Havana. I have the sequel on my shelf. Oh, I'm caught up in the Curse Breaker series by Bridget Kemmerer. It starts with A Curse So Dark and Lonely, which I read this year. And also I read the sequel, which was A Heart So Fierce and Broken. I really enjoyed both of those. I haven't even hauled this next one yet, but I did finish the Christmas trilogy by Matt Haig. This is a middle grade Christmas trilogy. In 2019, around December, I think of 2019, I read A Boy Called Christmas and The Girl Who Saved Christmas. And then this year, early in the year, probably very early in January, I finished the trilogy with Father Christmas and Me by Matt Haig. And then I just saw the box set on Book Outlet. So you'll be seeing that in a haul very soon. But I did complete that trilogy. There is a novella, The Truth Pixie, that goes with the series, but I it's not at any of my libraries. I've never actually seen it. I don't know if it's something that's just to be read online, 
but I think that's it for the books that I have read all the series I made progress in that's a lot there was 30 something of them but now going back up on my shelves I will tell you what's going up there we'll go through that pile and then I'll end it telling you about the six seven new series that I want to start in 2021. First up, I have the next in the Louise Pon the Louise Penny Three Pines series. So The Beautiful Mystery. I have, I think, all the rest of them, except maybe the very newest. So Trick of the Light is the only one I don't have. But I have all the rest of them, but I'm not putting the whole series out here. I'm just going to kind of put the next one. So when I read this one, I'll add the next one. I am trying to listen to these on audio because the narrator is so good. At some point, I believe he passes away or he stops being the narrator and there's a new narrator. Um, so I'm really sad about that. I and I need to look up who it is. I'll try to put him, his name in here because he's such a good narrator. But I really am enjoying the series and plan on making some decent progress. I don't know if I'll get to five of them this year, but hopefully a few. Another big series that I want to continue working on is the Outlander series. And this is book three, Voyager. I have already watched this series. I think the first three seasons are on Netflix, so I did already watch. <laughs> Sad, I should have read the book first. And we're just going to all the big ones first. Another huge one <laughs> that is the sequel to, oh, that was really dusty. This one is the sequel to Pillars of the Earth, which I read in 2019, so I, and I didn't make any progress this past year. So I would like to pick up World Without End and make progress in that. I think it's now a quartet. I think there's four of them now. Um, the King's Bridge, King's Bridge trilogy. I don't know anything about this one. So that's kind of fun. I have something to look forward to. The, another that I'm in the middle of is the Darker Shade of Magic or Shades of Magic trilogy. I read a Darker Shade of Magic before I moved here. So more than three years ago and never continued. So I probably have to go back and read that first one again before picking up this next one. But I am very interested in reading this trilogy still. So it's staying out here. The next book that I have in that Hagenheim series is The Warrior Maiden, which I believe is a Mulan retelling. So that should be pretty fun. And there's such quick, like delightful stories. <laughs> I guess this is a series that I started just recently in like November, October. Um, I read the first two in this trilogy with Katie from Life Between Words. And this is the Mark of the Lion trilogy by Francine Rivers. And so I read A Voice in the Wind and An Echo in the Darkness. And this is the third one as sure as, as the dawn. This one is a little bit different. We follow one of the characters from the first two books. Actually, he was mostly in the first book. I don't know that he was in the second book much at all. Um, but we follow, we kind of come back to him and his story in this one. So it's a little bit different. We we kind of hear about some of the other characters, but we really follow the story of that, that other guy <laughs> that was in the first book. So I'm excited to wrap that one up. That will be a finish. That would be a series finisher. Let me do some other series finishers here. I have quite a few that would finish. I have quite a few that would finish some series. So some of them are duologies. Some of them are series, but I have the Penderwicks at last, which is the last book in the Penderwick series. There's five of those. So I would like to read that one. I have Emily's Quest, which would be the end of that trilogy. I'm really hoping there was one storyline that I really didn't like that was a big focus of the second book. And I'm hoping that that is not really an issue in this one. We'll see. We'll see. But I am very eager to finish that one. And I believe I'm going to be reading that with Emily from Novel Novels in February. So that will wrap that one up. I have The Golden Road, which is also an Ella Montgomery. This is the sequel to The Story Girl, which I read for Middle Grade March in 2019. So yeah, I would really like to wrap up that duology. Another duology, this is a Christian fiction duology. Actually, I wonder now if there's more in the series or if it is just a duology. We'll have to, I'll have to look that up. But A Sparrow in Terrazin by Christy Cambrin. And this is the art... Oh, a hidden masterpiece novel. There's a dual timeline. One of the timelines is set during World War II, but art plays a big part, at least in the first one, which was The Butterfly and the Violin. And I believe art is going to play a big part in this one as well, which I'm really excited about. I like that when art is a part of the story. Another duology that's totally different, The Force of Nature by Jane Harper. The first one was The Dry, and I really, really loved it. So this is another novel where Aaron Falk, who was the main character in the first one, is going to be a big part of this one, I believe, as well. And Many people have told me that they actually like this one better than the first one. So I'm very eager to read that one. Man, I'm going to want to make my January TBR have all these books on it. One more duology is Fly Away by Kristen Hanna. I just love her. And most of her books break my heart <laughs> in some way. I find myself sobbing when I read her books, which 
I really enjoy that. It's like a cathartic thing for me, very healing and cleansing, I guess. But <laughs> I do cry a lot in her books. I am not sure I'm going to like that where the story goes in this one. There was some things about the first one that kind of got under my skin a little bit. So we shall see. But I am going to read it, knock it off this list. It's going to happen. I believe this series has more than just the two. It, originally, I thought it was just going to be a duology, but I believe there's more now in this series by Chanel Clayton. The first one is Next Year in Havana, and then this one is When We Left Cuba. So I would like to continue with that one. And of course, I have the third book in the Land of Stories series. I need to get those stickers off there. But this one is called A Grim Warning. So I'm sure we're going to get some Brothers Grimm fairy tales in there. And... The third book in the Maisie Dobbs series is called Pardonable Lies. These ones are kind of little. They're nice and short, which is fun. Nice, short and sweet. But that's it for the books that I actually own. So those are the ones I'm going to focus on this year. But I do have seven books that are series starters that are on my radar. <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? So hopefully I can finish up some of those, like especially these ones here that are going to finish up series or catch me up. And then this pile is going to be like on actually assures the dawn I should move over here as well because that one will finish up that trilogy. Anyways, I have quite a few that will finish up series. If I can knock them out early, then I won't feel so bad about starting some of these. But this is a middle grade series I would like to reread. I don't know that I ever finished it a long time ago when I was substitute teaching in Pennsylvania years and years ago. In one of the teacher's classrooms, she had these books. It was a sixth grade classroom. So I picked up one and kind of read it while I was subbing. And then I kept working at that school. So I kept borrowing these books from her. But I don't know that I ever finished the series. And I believe I have all of them now. I've been slowly getting them from Second and Charles. I mean, this was $2.79, but I used the credit that I get when I return books. So I've been slowly making sure I, I get all of these. So yeah, I would like to reread this series and they will not take me very long. I can fly through them. A series that I want to start that's a middle grade series is the Chronicles of Pride Ain series by Lloyd Alexander. And this has been recommended to me in that recommendations video for the last this year and last year. Someone recommended this series to me. And I know book... One of the books down the road, I think book five is a Newbery winner and book three is like an honor book or something. So I am also trying to read all the Newberries, but I'm obviously not going to pop into a series on book five. So I need to start at the beginning, which means I need to read this book. <laughs> I have two more that are middle grade. Another middle grade series I want to start is Keeper of Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger. This is a book that's very highly recommended to me this year on that recommendations video. And I have the first two books that I picked up from Book Outlet. So I'm really excited to start this series. The last middle grade series that I want to start is the Wing Feather Saga on the edge of the dark sea of darkness, <laughs> which is such a, a long title, but I'm really excited about this series. I've heard such good things. I love printed hardcovers. I just love it so much. A little character on the back there. I just think that this series is going to be so great. I'm actually, I hauled this book with money. I've been linking the books um, that I talk about in the description and I, it's part of the Amazon affiliate program. Every time you guys purchase from those links, it gives me a tiny kickback from that. And so this was the first thing that I purchased. And I actually, I haven't hauled this one yet, but I just got another gift card from Amazon from that affiliate program. And so I picked up the second one. So I do have two in this series and I'm really excited about starting it this year. A YA, I think this is YA. This might be adult. I would like to read Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. This, I think is a duology. Muse of Nightmares is the second one, but I could be wrong. It could be more, but I know that there are at least two in this series. So I want to read Stranger Dreamer. This book was gifted to me by Bailey. So thank you, Bailey, for getting this on my radar. I mean, it was already on my radar. It was on my wish list, but it's a book that I really want to read. <laughs> and I love this dragonfly cover. Anyways, very excited about that. Another fantasy that I want to start. Golly, Fantasy series are hard because they're so long, but I would like to, to start the next trilogy in Robin Hobb's world. I don't know if there's a name for all of the books in her world, <laughs> but I read the Farseer trilogy and finished it. So I must have finished the Farseer trilogy in 2019 because I just checked and it's not on my list. So I must have already finished it, which means I didn't read any of these in 2020, but I do have the first one in Live Ship Traders trilogy. This is book one. I do think that I might try to listen to this 
um, I saw it on script, so I may choose to listen to this instead, but that is another fantasy I'd like to read. And finally, the last series that I want to start, possibly, is another mystery series, which is hard because they usually have so many books in them, but this is the Flavia de Luce novel, and she is a child um, main character, and I think she kind of grows up as the series goes on, but she is, or I don't know if she's like 11 or 12 years old. Um, anyways, this is The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie by Alan Bradley, and it's the beginning of a mystery series. So I'm very excited to start that one. I know Kate Howe loves this series as well as so many others, but I hear her talk about it the most, I think. And so uh, this last time she talked about it, I checked and it was on Book Outlet, so I grabbed it. <laughs> I actually haven't hauled that one yet either. That's going over there in my haul pile. <laughs> So that's it. Whew. That's a lot of series talk all at once. This is 30 minutes long. Holy moly. I would love to chat with you about series. Which of these books should I definitely try to finish? Are there any series up here that you're like, Krista, just let it go. Don't bother with it. I'm just, I like keeping them separate so that I keep them in the forefront of my brain. I don't know if I will have as much success in 2021 as I did in 2020 with series, but we'll see. My goal is just to make progress in series. So it's kind of a goal. I'm not going to be super strict about it. I'm not going to say which ones I have to read first. I know quite a few of these are on um, my recommendations list for this year. So those will be places that I start as well or motivation to pick those ones up sooner. But let's chat about series down in the comments below or about anything else you guys know. I love talking with you down there and I will be talking to you in another video very soon. Bye. Bye.